Hello again, Dora Markowitz here from D Guitars Miami with another edition of This Week in Custom Crafted Cool Guitars. This week I'm very proud to, uh, to unveil a guitar that I had built back in 1996 um, and then I had sold it in 98 or 99 to a kid in Orlando and it bounced around from owner to owner and in 2010 the last guy that owned it had called me and said that he had bought it in a pawn shop in Arizona and basically a friend of his pretty much destroyed the guitar and he wanted to send it back to me so that I could restore it for myself. Um, when I had built this, 96 and 97 were like a golden age for me where I was coming up with a lot of prototypes for a lot of different ideas that I had and this was the first one that I had come up with uh, as a marketable idea and I'm very proud of this guitar. To be honest, when I got it back I wasn't even sure that I could even salvage it. The fretboard had, the original maple fretboard had been scalloped so badly that it was, um, it was in pieces almost. The, um, the neck had been just through the mill. The, the uh, threaded section of the original single action truss rod that I had made was broken off completely so it couldn't even be adjusted. Um, the guy's friend had drilled the original, uh, had drilled the pickups through the body instead of leaving them on the mounting rings and then drilled another big hole through the back for whatever reason. Basically just decimated the guitar. Uh, when I first built it, um, it had, it's still the original neck, but I had to rebuild it, but I had made the neck out of maple with a fretboard that had basically three pieces. These are the, some shards of the fretboard that I took off. You can see the scallops that were done. The first three frets were the only ones that weren't scalloped. And when I had made it, the, the outer pieces uh, are flame maple and the middle piece was a quarter inch strip of red oak. And the red oak went into the neck itself to follow the shape of the curve of the truss rod to make the whole thing seem more uh, solid and integral to get better resonance. And it worked. It was actually superb. Um, this new version now, basically when I got it back, I had to shear off the old fretboard chunk by chunk. I had to reconstruct the entire gluing surface for the fretboard area, which had chunks of wood missing. I had to shave the back of the neck flat and graft in a new piece of wood, and I had used a very resonant piece of teak that I actually had in my wood closet, um, which is weird because teak isn't very resonant, but I guess it was kismet or serendipity. And I increased the width, uh, with a couple of strips of quarter inch red oak. Uh, when I first built it, I had made it with a one and five eighth inch nut width. I wasn't really thrilled with that, but I was trying to find different nut widths that I would like. And so now it's one and three quarters the way I like. I've built up the thickness to a nice 22 and a half millimeters all the way up with a nice round C shape, fits really nicely in the hands. The fingerboard is Grenadillo. And instead of having no inlays like original, I decided to do a Brian May Red Special inspired inlay pattern with the, with, but using ovals and dots of abalone. And I also did uh, five concentric circles of maple around uh, these five dots just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. The body is constructed of poplar and red oak and it's one and a half inches thick. You can see that it's got an extreme belly carve and an extreme arm carve, which makes this extremely comfortable. Um, the original finish that it had was uh, a dirt stain to it, where it had some streaks. It was really, it was really neat. I was trying to go for a weathered look at that time. This time around, I stripped it completely and I did this uh, olive green to brown uh, burst. And because it's basically 17 years old, I decided to give it some delicate relicking, such as on the edge here, on the back, you know, certain areas, to basically celebrate its age. It originally had a tunematic bridge with a string through body design. That's been replaced with this gold Washburn Wonder Bar. Um, the original pickups I had put in were a pair of Goto full-size humbuckers. I replaced them. Well, when I got the guitar back, it was missing everything ex anyway, except for the, the tunematic bridge. Um, I've, I've installed a pair of gold Minitron style mini humbuckers, and they're wired to 500k volume and tone pots, and each one is a push-pull for series parallel for their respective pickup. 
This one is wired to the push-pull of the volume, and this one is wired to the push-pull of the tone, and then you have the three-way toggle switch, and the inverted jack cup that actually sends the, the cable directly to the strap area. Um, I've got a set of uh, black uh, thumb locking tuners on here, a new truss rod cover that shows the restored date of 4-19-2013. I originally built it on 4-17 of 1996. Um, I've had the guitar for almost three years now. It was shipped back to me in October of 2010 and basically sat in a corner of my guitar room up until about a month or so ago. To be honest, when I, when I looked at it, I wasn't sure I could even salvage it. The, the neck was in just that bad a shape. And the job I ended up doing on this really even surprised me. Um, she's got such an incredible resonance to her. She actually gained a pound because of the bridge. Originally when I built her, she was six and a half pounds, now she's seven and a half. Um, also, the scale length originally was 24 and three quarters with a 24, in, uh, 24 fret fingerboard. Now it's 25 and a half with the 24 fret fingerboard. I basically extended the fingerboard area a little bit more into the headstock slightly and uh, a little bit more into the body. Everything worked out beautifully. Um, okay, so now you know basically what it went through and now you want to hear how it sounds. First, it's got a beautiful resonance acoustically. And here are the pickups. Oh, before I get to really playing, both pickups are about six and a half K uh, impedance. When I ordered them, the, the ad specifically said that the bridge was 14K. So when I measured them, I was a bit upset that the bridge pickup was basically the same output as the neck until I wired it up. Um, it's got a sweetness to it and a jangle that is fantastic. And even with heavy, heavy distortion, the notes are so articulated and so clear. The clarity is amazing. You have to work a little harder to really get some shred out of it, but it's worth it because the tone is just unbelievable. Okay, so here's the bridge pickup. It's nice and spanky, you know? And here's the neck pickup. together. Oh, I have to also say, the action is at 1 16th of an inch. I mean, it's incredibly low, and the neck is dead straight. It begs to be played. This thing plays so slick, it almost plays itself. It's so smooth. Alright, so now, bridge pickup in parallel mode. Put some chorus on, gives it even more three dimensionality to it. series. Now both of them in parallel. Bridge in parallel, neck in series. So that's basically the clean sounds. Oh, also, I made the, uh, the, the control plate out of uh, Paduk and painted it to match the rest of the body. So, you know, I like the whole thing to, be to have symmetry and to work with wood as much as possible. Okay, so now you've heard it clean, 
Here's how it sounds with some distortion. Let's put on a little bit of, of just crunch to, to get a nice dirty tone out of it. Let me turn off the chorus first. Here's the bridge pickup in series. to some full-on shred distortion. You get the idea. I could play this thing all day. And since I since I finished restoring it a couple days ago, pretty much I've been playing it every night when I went, when I stopped working. I mean, this guitar is just it's a real treasure. I'm so proud of how it came out. Um, I have to say, in my 25 years as a luthier, this is probably my proudest achievement compared to everything else that I've done. The red specials that I've built. The the arch top restorations that I've done, headstock breaks and all that. This is my finest achievement because I honestly thought the neck wasn't salvageable. I actually thought that I would probably have to somehow take the neck off and make a new one for it. It's a set neck design and I was able to retain actually most of the neck structure. It's got, you know, a full new piece on the back and width, but the entire core of the neck is still there. Um, it was a challenge and it hit a lot of bumps along the road as I did it, but in the end it was totally worth it as you can clearly see and as you can clearly hear. And at this time I'd like to actually show some still photos of how it looked when I first finished it back in 1996, the process, I, uh, how it looked when I got it back, and the process that I went through to get it to how it looks now. So enjoy the, this uh, still photo presentation. Okay, so this is how she looked when I first completed her in 1996. Pretty, huh? And this is how she looked when I got her back. She was a complete and total wreck. Look at this back. It's completely ratted out, full of holes, all scratched up, just terrible. The headstock was a whole other challenge because if you look closely, you can see that the threaded section of the truss rod was completely broken off. So the board has to come off in order to replace it. And look at that scallop job. It's so bad. It's so deep it actually was into the wood of the neck. So first I had to start by shearing off the fretboard with chisel and mallet. And of course it came off in chunks and in sections. So what I was left with was anything but a flat surface. It was terribly ratted out. After that I turned my attention to the back by using my spoke shave and my block sand to uh, smoothen and flatten the back of the neck. So that way it's prepared and ready for the uh, 
the, the half inch thick teak graft to be glued on. Here you can see it being glued on. Once the clamps were taken off, I had a nice solidly rigid neck that I could now work with to for the fretboard. In the meantime, I now took my coping saw and shaved the sides so I could prepare to glue the oak uh, grafts onto the sides of the neck. Here you see the oak grafts being glued onto the sides of the neck. And once the clamps came off, I have this piece. So once I uh, started using my coping saw to cut off the excess of the oak, I now had a block that basically could be shaped into a neck. Now that the neck was solid, I turned back to the top and after completely uh, renovating the fretboard area, I started working towards installing the truss rod first. I needed to line it up and then I needed to route the channel for the truss rod. And then after that, I, I inserted the truss rod and glued in the filler strip and then I glued on the fretboard. And once the glue was dry and the clamps came off, I went back to shaping the back of the neck using my uh, wood rasps and my spoke shave and after all that hard work voila here is the neck ready to be finished now it's time to make the new control cavity cover out of a piece of caduc and now it's time to work on the fretboard inlays I start routing the cavities for the inlays themselves and then I glue in the inlays and they're ready to uh, be sanded and after all the fret work and so forth the guitar is done Okay, so as you can see, uh, this guitar had been through a lot in the last 17 years. And uh, it was quite a road to get it to where it is now. And like I said, I'm very proud of it. What I had originally christened as my Lion guitar, because I named it the Lion, has now been rechristened as my Golden Lion. Um, and this, I'm very proud to say, is the prototype of a new production line. So if you're interested in having your own Golden Lion built, don't hesitate to give me a call at 305-896-1811. So until next time, Doran Markowitz from D Guitars Miami. Thanks for watching and have a great day.